Welcome to this episode of YouTube where I've entitled it A Fall Sunset and we've got some beautiful backdrops here this week when we are filming and we are in the middle of doing some project work so uh, things are a little bit tense uh, from the standpoint of some redirected aggression. Uh, this is Luna guarding me while I was filming and uh, she has a tendency to want to guard wolf care staff and it's been a little tense because we've been doing a little bit of work on the pond. We're still waiting for the bids to be let in the building, but we did manage to get the housing area in for the UV filter. So it's a little bit big, um, the concrete area, but we do need to have filters above ground that are going to run water through the UV filter to be able to control the algae. So in order to get this done, and the walls have had to be locked off multiple times uh, during the week for multiple periods of time, as long as, you know, six hours on the first day. But basically the box that you see is going to be covered with rock, and actually it'll be a nice place for the wolves to lie on once we get the rock work done. But inside that will be the UV filter and the necessary hardware to be able to make sure that we have a clean pond in the future. So that's what we're working on. So as I said, the sunset gives some really nice light uh, when we have these kind of late afternoon filming opportunities. Uh, we see the wolves pretty active during this time of the day. This is filmed about 5 p.m. Central Time. So they're active and they are up in the wooded areas and it gives us a little bit of ability to see them interact. And one thing that we're seeing, like I said, Aiden's been a little bit stressed about this construction more than anybody else. And that's his role as a pack leader, just being locked away and having people in his enclosure has is, is been a little tough and he has a tendency to redirect and his redirections typically will be towards Denali and we've been watching that pretty closely. This is the time of the year that they naturally have an increase in testosterone and they naturally start asserting a little bit more rank order so that's part of it but here's Aiden coming out of the woods you can see his tail posture and a T2 T1 tail again ears prick forward he's pretty intense Denali goes into a subordinate role and what I'm most concerned about is you know this is a pretty passive dominance standing over him it's pretty much uh, over as far as you know Aiden's concerned Denali rolls over pretty quickly, but Denali's going to do a little bit of obnoxious submission, a little bit of uh, in the face kind of redirecting a little bit more intense dominance, and here comes Bolts, as Bolts is quick to ride up on Aiden when Aiden's preoccupied with Denali or with Luna. So we've got to watch that, and Denali, again, um, is the source of that little episode because he did a little of that obnoxious submission kind of resistance and uh, the whole time though Aiden remains confident his tail is up Bolts's tail is down but that just reminds us that we need to make sure that we are doing everything we can to make sure that Aiden feels confident as this winter goes on so again Bolts has this tail down low he's not likely to start anything but if Aiden is distracted or as Aiden is intimidated by uh, activity outside of the enclosure Bulls is pretty quick to move in so that's something for wolf care staff to be extremely observant about every direct eye stare every movement of the ear every posturing that goes on we need to read and we need to read almost immediately what the attitude is of these males in the rank order so one thing people always say is why don't you stop this and well the reality is stopping it makes Bolts think he wins make Denali thinks he wins makes Aiden think they win he wins so therefore then they all come back more confident and and sometimes in the middle of the night um, with this idea to be able to really improve or move up in rank and so you can see here Aiden's got no problem dealing with Bolts he gives him a direct uh, snarl, threat display, bolts backs off. Aiden is clearly in charge of this situation, but it again, it just reminds us that I can't stress out Aiden. I've got to make sure that things are calm, uh, things that he's not, you know, having a lot of anxiety. So when we do these projects, you know, we need to hold him for a period of time, but we've got to be very cognitive of how that's done. So this is, like I said, a week of, of working on the pond stuff, and now we've got the weekend. We're open to the public. Um, that kennel will stay there until we get the lid, and then we get the rocks moved around, but the wolves aren't really bothering it as much. So we're, uh, you know, we just want to keep them out of it because we don't want them to dig on it or climb in it. 
One other thing that told me that this wasn't too problematic was that Luna was nowhere to be found while the males were going through their dominance hierarchy. And typically, if it is something a little bit more intense, she's going to be involved. So she was up in the woods and she was uh, found a deer hide or had been chewing on a deer hide. Another benefit of projects is lots of things are being fed. So she had a part of a deer, a couple of deer legs this week. Uh, she's uh, very actively guarding the full carcasses, usually on Sunday morning. Nobody can get near it. So this is a little bit of that deer hide consumption that allows wolves to be able to wrap bones that they chew on and that those bones are then uh, easily digested or are passed through the digestive tract without having too much problems. So she was up in the hill um, feeding on her deer and then decided to come down to the edge of the hill and watch the males um, do their little bit of rank order thing but didn't get involved and uh, so usually if Luna's not involved it's not too serious so the uh, tension is there because like I said the projects create some tension but overall the pack's been enjoying this nice relatively mild fall we haven't had any snow yet um, had a little bit of ice pellets um, maybe a week and a half ago, but really haven't had anything that uh, gives an indication that winter is on its way. But it is northern Minnesota, so we know that that's uh, coming relatively soon. So over in um, Grizzer's area, um, Grizzer reaps the benefit of these wolves having so many treats. And uh, the pack holding area, which is the front part of where Grizzer is, is where the exhibit pack gets moved when work needs to be done in the enclosure. And that means there's leftovers. And those leftovers um, and include pig's ears, they might be beaver tails, they might be, you know, deer legs, uh, etc. So Grizzer is chewing on a cow ear here, which by the way, is not their favorite. Uh, we uh, ordered some and thought that maybe it was a good kind of mix uh, from pig's ears to cow's ears, and they really don't care much for it. Grizzer's um, not as crunchy. It's kind of soft, and so Grizzer's going to try to chew on it, and you notice he's got it on the far back. Carnesial's trying to cut it, and a uh, little bit tough to chew on, not as easy as the pig's ears. So we will likely not uh, cons purchase those again or, or put those on our Amazon wish list. Definitely pigs are, are the preferred for these wolves. So you can see that little red pine tree there that survived. A couple of them survived in the pack holding area. So as we have pups next year, this is where the pups will be hanging out. And hopefully we'll have a little bit more greenery there for the pups and get some better backdrop um, for those pups and uh, give them some stimulus as they're part of the exhibit. So that's it for this week's YouTube. And again, thanks for watching. And we want to give a shout out to Danielle and let her know that we're thinking about you here in Wolf Care. So you have a good week and we'll see you next week.